Hey guys, Dylan here. Today we're going to talk about social contract, how it's part of your game whether you know it or not, and how being aware of it, making it clear to your players, working around it can make a huge difference, keeping your game open, friendly, and most importantly, not fucking terrible. Uh, you've probably only heard the word social contract in your boring ass freshman year civics course, but the concept of social contract is present in basically every human relationship and group dynamic. The list of things you can and can't do is, in any case, a social contract, whether it's implied or explicitly stated. When you kiss your lover, that's within the social contract. When you kiss someone you want to be your lover and they smack the shit out of you, that's part of your punishment for breaking a social contract. Uh, so why does this matter for your game? Well, just like mechanical rules that make up the gamey part of your game, there are social rules for interaction between members of the community. There are terms of social stratification between staff members, veterans, and new players. There are expectations of behavior and expectations against behavior. There are principles that are held up by your community, which, when embraced, bring acceptance. Uh, unlike your mechanical rules, though, your social contract is almost certainly unspoken and always very, very confusing. So to help us understand the idea of a, l a LARP social contract, let's, uh, let's talk about some common elements of social contract that you see in some LARPs. Restrictions on physical contact are an important part of a social contract. Uh, in many American Boffer games, there's a lightest touch system, which means you don't hit anybody any harder than you think you need to hit them for them to feel it. Uh, this is more than just a mechanical rule, right? Uh, because if you do this all the time, and every game has people who do this all the time, you will be ostracized. You'll actually face a, a loss in prestige, a loss in social status, as a result of breaking this mostly unspoken rule of buffer larping. Um, there are similar rules like this for parlor games that can say absolutely no touching whatsoever, uh, or rules against metagaming, which are present in basically all role-playing games. Uh, and you can call these sorts of expectations against the behavior, you can call those bans. So you're banned from doing this, you're banned from doing that. There are things that you are prevented from doing freely by the social contract. Uh, usually, bans are enforced through disciplinary action, through positive punishment, or the application of a punishment uh, that was not previously present. Now, the converse of that, which we can just call expectations, uh, these are rules that are held in place that try to encourage a certain behavior. These are enforced in very different ways. A great example of that, some of you who are watching will, will be very familiar with this, uh, but in the LARP Forest of Doors in the Atlanta area, there is a legacy mechanic, which is a mechanic that greatly slows character progression after a certain point, uh, and strongly encourages players of veteran characters to retire those characters. They get the cool big send-off, basically a whole event about themselves. Uh, to retire those characters and allow other characters to kind of raise up and become super powerful in their own life. Uh, now this is enforced in a couple of different ways. It's enforced through a, a negative punishment, which is to say a large number of the character points you would gain per game are taken away from you once you pass a certain threshold. And it's also uh, enforced through a positive reinforcement in that you are given a large number of bonus points for your new character if you actually utilize the retirement option. So that's a good example of a part of a social contract where we're trying to encourage a specific action rather than trying to discourage it. So suffice to say, there are a ton of different rules and they're all developed and it gets increasingly exponentially more complicated the more people are involved in it. It also gets more complicated over time as certain people are more charismatic, they, they gain more influence over any small group dynamic over time, and so they begin to affect their own changes to your social contract as well. So obviously this is a super complicated issue, it's one that can cause a lot of drama because people can interpret a given point of this unspoken social contract in a different way, or people might not realize that there's some social contract in place in regards to a certain action. They might not realize it isn't okay to put your hand on somebody's shoulder without asking them ahead of time, right? That's not a super intuitive rule, but it can nonetheless be a very serious and very important rule in your game, in your community. Uh, so. How do you fix it? Uh, the best way to fix it is to just write your social contract like you would write any other contract, to actually codify it, write it out point by point and say, this is our vision, these are our rules, these are our values, this is what we want you to do, this is what we don't want you to do, to be very clear and transparent and specific about it, right? Like, uh, an excellent example, there's a game called After the End starting up, it has a, a very clear delineation 
between permanent serious staff members and a lower level of staff members. And the difference is those permanent serious staff members will absolutely never play player characters of the game. Period. 100%. That is a hardbound, codified social rule. All right, and that functions to build trust. That functions to, for the principle of trust, transparency always builds trust. When people can see what's going on, they're always going to be more willing to trust it. So that's my advice to you when you're thinking about social contract and how it interacts with your game and how it may or may not make it better or worse. Be transparent. Be straightforward. Say your rules ahead of time. Yes, you will lose players. Absolutely. There will be people who will disagree with whatever you've decided to make explicit as a value or as a goal or as a vision for your game. There will be people who will say, no, I disagree. I think I should be able to beat the shit out of people if I want. There will be people who disagree and say, no, I don't want a stranger putting his hand on my shoulder when I don't know him. This is complicated. Nobody's right or wrong. But if you're clear up front and you're clear ahead of time, the people who do stay with your game are going to be more tightly knit. You're going to have a much stronger community. You're going to have a much more open community that is willing to discourse about issues because there is the fundamental social contract in place that is going to protect and insulate and maintain the community as it develops. That's my advice to you. It's very complicated. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I have you know hours upon hours that I could talk about this topic, but I tried to condense it down into one video. So uh, you know, leave a comment or send me a video back or whatever you want to do. And let me know what your opinion is. If you want me to expound on something, if you disagree with me, then just say it. And I'll be happy to enter a good civil discourse with you. Uh, or call you an idiot on the internet, as I understand that's somewhat traditional. Either way, look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. You know, sell my soul, whatever. Thanks!